Today, we will be discussing how to read labels. It's really important you read the labels of the foods before you purchase or eat them. There are many manufacturers that list their foods as low fat, a good source of fiber, or claim that they have lower cholesterol. These statements don't give you all the information you need, so it's very important that you learn to read labels and make educated decisions on the foods you consume. Once you learn how to read the labels the right way, you have so much variety added into your TLS weight loss solution lifestyle. TLS focuses on low glycemic impact eating. This means by eating the right kinds of food, along with the right amounts of foods, your body will always be healthy and in a fat burning mode instead of being in starvation mode and fat storage mode. Most people look at food labels. Unfortunately, they do not know what to look for. When surveyed, most people stated that they looked at the calories, fat, and carbohydrates on labels, yet they didn't know what the numbers on the label actually meant or how to choose one food over the other based on the particular label. We are going to teach you the correct way to read labels, so it isn't what you cannot eat with TLS, but what you can eat with TLS. There are certain areas on labels that you should pay attention to. These include the serving size, fat, carbohydrates, fiber, proteins, and ingredients. Let's tackle these one at a time, starting with serving size. Serving size is the recommended portion of food to be eaten. For example, the label may state that the food has two and a half servings. If we eat the entire food, we just consumed two and a half servings of that food instead of the single serving size. So essentially, that food should last for two and a half servings, not the one like the way we eat. Now just because the serving size may suggest that the food is one serving, make sure you pay attention to the remaining parts of the label too. The second area we are going to focus on is the total fat, which is made up of saturated, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, and trans fat. Notice we skipped right over the calories. We do not focus on calories on TLS and realize that 100 calories of a fresh, organic apple is not the same as 100 calories of cookies. Also, beware of labels that say fat-free. Fat-free foods may have more sugar in them and essentially contain less than one half grams of fat per serving, but if you eat the entire bag of the food, it is still a high-fat food. In order for a food to be classified as low-fat, it must have three grams of total fat or less per serving. However, with TLS and low glycemic impact eating, we recommend five grams of total fat or less per serving, except for the good or healthy fats. Some examples of these healthy fats are foods like salmon, avocado, nuts, natural nut butters, and oils. So if you're looking for a bottle of olive oil, for example, perhaps your bottle says one tablespoon is 14 grams of fat. Since the olive oil is a good and healthy fat, you should consume the entire tablespoon. Just remember, just because you're able to eat the 14 grams of fat in the oil doesn't mean you can eat 14 grams of junk food. And remember, five grams of fat or less on any food except those healthy or good fats. The third area we are going to discuss is total carbohydrates. Total carbohydrates are made up of fiber, sugar, and of course, the complex carbohydrates like breads, cereals, potatoes, and rice, to name a few that are found in the food. Also listed under the carbohydrate section may be sugar alcohols and glycerin. The fiber and sugar are listed separately as an indentation of the total carbohydrates, so it's easy to determine where most of the carbohydrates in the food are coming from. For example, if the total carbohydrates are 15 grams and the fiber is 10 grams, you know that most of those carbohydrates are from fiber. You may hear of something called net carbohydrates or impact carbohydrates. These net or impact carbs of a food are not always listed on the label, but they are easy to determine based on the information given on the label. In order to calculate these carbs, you simply take the total carbohydrates and subtract the fiber, sugar, alcohols, and glycerin. This will give you the impact carbs of the food. In other words, this will let you know how much of the carbohydrates you eat will impact your blood sugar levels. Ideally, you want to have the net carbs of the food you eat to be a single digit. So zero to nine is optimal, 10 or more is high. It is important to remember that not all food brands will list the sugar alcohols or glycerin on the label. Also keep in mind that most grain foods will rarely result in single net carbohydrate values. Many of the carbohydrates in foods like breads, pasta, potatoes, rice, dried beans, and other grains can slow weight loss 
even if they have a great source of fiber. If your TLS plan allows you to eat low GI starches or grains, remember to consume only single serving sizes. Next, let's look at fiber. It's important that you are getting enough fiber, so make sure that the food you eat has at least five grams of fiber per serving. Unfortunately, most people eat less than 10 grams of fiber daily, while 25 grams or more of fiber per day is what is recommended for most adults. There are two types of fiber, soluble and insoluble. Both soluble and insoluble fibers are indigestible and therefore they are not absorbed into the bloodstream. Instead of being used for energy, fiber is excreted from our bodies. So there's a reason we don't need to eat a big bowl of fiber before exercise. It just leaves the body and doesn't provide us with energy. Soluble fiber forms a gel when mixed with liquid and typically is found in fruits, vegetables, dried beans, peas, and other sources. Insoluble fiber is gritty and passes through our intestines largely intact. Insoluble fiber accounts for 70% of the fiber in our diets and is found in whole grains, barley, couscous, carrots, cucumbers, celery, and other foods. TLS recommends that no matter what your meal plan is, you should consume at least five grams of fiber in a single serving. Three or four grams per serving is okay, but less than two grams of fiber per serving will not contribute to your efforts. The fifth area to review on the label is the sugar. There are many forms of sugars. Some are natural sugars like fructose, which is the sugar found in fruits, and lactose, which is the sugar found in plain milk products. Others are the unhealthy sugars that are found in baked goods and other unhealthy foods. Our bodies need sugar. In fact, every cell requires it. However, many people choose the wrong kinds of sugar and consume too much of it. When looking at sugars on the label, remember to look for five grams of sugar or less per serving, except in dairy products. Dairy products, including milk, cheese, yogurt, and other forms of dairy contain lactose. Since this is a natural sugar, it's okay to consume more than five grams. An example of this is milk. When picking up a gallon of low-fat milk, you would review the label, as we mentioned, and you may notice 10 grams of sugar per eight ounces. Since the sugar found in the milk is a natural sugar, the serving size you can consume is eight ounces. However, perhaps you decide on a flavored yogurt. You may quickly find the sugar on that to be over 20 grams. It is fair to assume that the first 10 grams of that yogurt is the same natural sugar found in plain milk, but there's an additional 10 grams, which is too much sugar. The sixth area on a food label to review is the protein. Protein is important for metabolism and building muscle mass, which helps burn fat. TLS recommends four to six ounces of protein per serving for women at least three times a day and six to eight ounces of protein per serving for men at least three times a day. In order to get these quantities of protein into your diet, it's important that you pay attention to the grams of protein listed on the label. Seven grams of protein will equal one ounce serving of protein. Let's say an egg has seven grams of protein. In order to meet your protein requirement for breakfast, which should be about four to eight ounces, depending on if you are a female or male, you would have to eat at least four egg whites, which would be 28 grams of protein. But instead of weighing your food or focusing on grams, TLS simplifies things. Hold out your hand, palm up. Your palm is a great measurement of a single serving of protein. Don't forget the side width of your palm also. Some good lean sources of protein are lean meats, egg whites, and poultry. Many other foods have proteins also. Examples are things like yogurt, which is also a dairy product, nuts, which are also healthy fats, and beans, which are also low glycemic starches. When eating these or other types of protein, be sure that there is at least five grams or more of protein per serving. With TLS, the adage goes, protein and fiber with every meal makes losing weight no big deal. If you can eat a serving size of protein every time you eat, your body will stay satisfied longer and you will burn more calories. Let's now discuss the ingredient section. The less ingredients in the food, the better. And remember, the first ingredient listed on the label is often the ingredient that the food has the most of. So if you're picking up canned tuna, you would expect the first ingredient to be tuna. It is okay to have sugar in your food, but like we said earlier, there are many kinds of sugar. Apples or carrots contain natural sugar and often will not have a label on them. It's important that you make yourself familiar with the various forms of sugar and how they're listed on the label. Sugar can be hidden in many forms, including high fructose corn syrup, high maltose corn syrup, brown rice syrup, molasses, 
cane juice, lactose, dextrose, and corn sweetener. A great rule of thumb is to avoid any label that has a sweetener of any kind in the first five ingredients. You also want to avoid any foods that have trans fats in them. You may see trans fats listed under total fats, but the ingredient section may tell the food contains partially hydrogenated oils or hydrogenated oils. Any hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oil is a trans fat and should be avoided. You will also notice that we skipped over cholesterol and sodium on labels. It's not because they're not important, but when you're eating and following the label as we are suggesting with TLS, you will not find that the foods you're choosing have high cholesterol or sodium in them. Typically, sodium or salt is not the enemy. The issue with high sodium foods is that they're typically found in unhealthy, processed, canned foods or foods that require preserving. Unless your healthcare provider tells you to restrict the sodium or cholesterol in your food, following labels in the ways discussed is an effective way to eat. The percent daily values is another component listed on the label. The percent daily value is listed for each nutrient and is found in the right column on the label. These tell you what percentage of each nutrient the food provides if you are on a 2,000 calorie per day diet. In summary, reading labels is easy. Pay attention to the serving size, ingredient list, and keep the net carbs in the single digits. Also remember the fabulous fives. As we at TLS like to call them, five grams of fat or less per serving, except the good fats. Five grams of sugar or less per serving, except the natural dairy products. Five grams of fiber or more per serving, and five grams of protein or more per serving. Also remember that pairing protein and fiber at every meal makes losing weight no big deal. Now that you know how to read labels, making healthy, tasty foods with tons of variety will help you reach your goals without boredom or plain foods.